Hello and welcome. As you know, we're working our way through the Gospels, looking at the 35 stories or so which are told about Jesus effecting miracles. And John called these miracles signs. To date, we've seen three resurrections by Jesus. These were signs that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He's the source of eternal life. And we've looked at nine nature miracles, occasions when Jesus did what only God could do. And this was a sign, these were signs that Jesus was embodied God, that Jesus was the Old Testament God in flesh, incarnate, doing things which only Old Testament God could do. Now we're turning today to look at the majority of his miracles, which were healings and exorcisms. People who are ill, Jesus made well. People who are disabled, Jesus enabled. People who were possessed were exorcised. And we're beginning today with some who are ill, who were outcasts, people who were rejected by the people of their day. Beginning with a physical healing, which is found in Matthew, Mark and Luke, but I'm going to read to, it, to you from Luke about a leper. Luke chapter 5, verse 12. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their illnesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. You may know that Luke, as well as being a historian and a theo theologian, was a doctor. And he described this man as being covered in leprosy. He was seriously ill and completely beyond cure. He was horribly disfigured, he was socially rejected, and he was shunned by good religious people. Now in Bible times, any serious skin disease was described as being leprosy. In our day, doctors narrowed down that definition of leprosy to what they call Hansen's disease. But almost certainly this man who is covered with leprosy was suffering from Hansen's disease. And in the book of Leviticus, it tells us how such people are to be treated. I'll read to you from chapter 13. Anyone with such a defiling skin disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkempt, cover the lower part of their face and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. This was the law of Moses at the time. Leprosy patients had to live isolated lives. They weren't allowed to enter Jerusalem. They weren't allowed to go to the temple for worship. Well, I believe they could go to synagogue where they had to hide behind a curtain so that nobody saw them. They had to wear torn clothes to show how much they repented of the sins which were supposed to have caused the leprosy in the first place. They lived lonely lives. And if somebody approached them who was not a sufferer, they had to shout out, unclean, unclean, as a warning for these people to keep well away. People found leprosy repulsive and they avoided those who suffered from it. And if you touch somebody who was unclean, if you touch somebody with leprosy, you yourself became unclean. And so these people live financially, socially and religiously isolated lives. Now in Old Testament times, only two prophets have been used by God in the cleansing of leprosy. Moses was used in the cleansing of Miriam, his sister, and Elisha was used in the cleansing of Naaman the Syrian. But they never touched the patient. The, the healing came directly from God to the patient. Well, this man comes to Jesus covered in leprosy. 
and he fell to the ground. He believed that Jesus could do something for him, but would he? And Jesus did what no one expected. The man kept his distance, as he should do. But Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. Jesus bridged the gap. Jesus made the effort to come as close as possible to the man so that he could reassure him by laying hands upon him. I am willing, Jesus said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. His skin was transformed. The man was not only cured, but he was cleansed because now he could be restored to normal social life. And Jesus gave him three instructions. Firstly, don't tell anyone because Jesus didn't want to be distracted from his ministry by being pestered by people clamoring for miracles and healings. The second instruction was to go to the priest who would declare the man to be truly clean. And then the man was to make appropriate sacrifices as was required by the law of Moses. Jesus had made the unclean man clean. The unclean man didn't make Jesus unclean, Jesus made him clean. Jesus had touched the untouchable and made the untouchable touchable. Now he could get married. Or if he was married, he could resume his marriage. Now he could go shopping in towns. Now he could visit family and friends. Now he could worship at the temple. Now he could resume his job. He was cleansed. He was restored. He was clean. On another occasion, there were ten unclean people who, claim, who came to Jesus. Ten sufferers from leprosy. Reading this time from Luke chapter 17. This story is only to be found in Luke's Gospel. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Jesus is on his final way to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he was interrupted by ten men asking for pity or mercy or compassion. And because most of them were Jews and they knew their law, they kept at a distance. How ironical that one of them was a Samaritan. Jews and Samaritans, as you probably know, didn't get on at all well together but leprosy reconciled Jew and Gentile. They could mix together because they were fellow sufferers from this disease that turned them all into outcasts. Jesus didn't touch them, but he sent them to the priest. Go to the priest and show him that you are healed. And as they went, they were cleansed. That word cleansed means not only that they were healed, but they were reinstated. They could go back to normal social living. And as they were walking, almost certainly to Jerusalem to, re to show themselves to the priest, one realised he'd been cleansed, healed, re reinstated, and he turned back to find Jesus and praised God and threw himself at the feet of Jesus and said, thank you. In chapter 5, the leper threw himself at Jesus' feet before he had been healed. In chapter 17, this leper throws himself at Jesus' feet after he has been healed. And you sense the disappointment in Jesus. Nine Jews healed, taken for granted. One Samaritan healed, he comes back and says, thank you. And Jesus says to this man, your faith has made you well. That word means healed. It can also be translated as saved. 
the man had been healed and saved because of his faith that Jesus could do something for him. This Samaritan had recognised something special about Jesus which the other nine had missed. A third person, who is also an outcast, is a woman who is described in Matthew, Mark and Luke. But I'm going to read it to you from Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. Now we've already had some miracles involving women. For example, the bereaved widow at Nain, whose son was raised from the dead, and Jairus' daughter, who was resurrected by Jesus. But this story in Luke, chapter 8, comes in the middle of Jairus approaching Jesus for help, for healing, salvation for his daughter who was at death's door. And the whole process is interrupted by this hemorrhaging woman. Luke chapter 8 and verse 40. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And then Jesus went on to Jairus' house to raise his daughter from the dead. This is, is another gospel sandwich. The story of this woman's healing is sandwiched in between two parts to the story of Jairus' daughter being healed. Rather like the story of the cleaning of the temple was fitted into two parts between the cursing of the fig tree which died and then the apostles seeing it the following day and commenting on what had happened. This woman was hemorrhaging. Let me read to you from Levitic Leviticus chapter 15 how she would have been treated under Jewish law. When a woman has a discharge of blood for many days at a time, other than her monthly period, or has a discharge that continues beyond her period, she will be unclean as long as she has the discharge, just as in the days of her period. Any bed she lies on while her discharge continues will be unclean, as is her bed during her monthly period. And anything she sits on will be unclean, as during her period. Anyone who touches them will be unclean. They must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. You can see how this woman was being treated. But also see what a social gaffe she made by approaching Jesus. She was interrupting Jesus' work for a ruler of the synagogue, an eminent man, a man high up in society, respected by all. And here she is, a despised, bleeding woman, interrupting the pro progress of Jesus to his house. She has suffered 12 years of bleeding. She must have been frightfully anemic. 12 years of social shunning. 12 years not being able to be married, or if she is married, not being able to have married relations. 12 years of being banned from the temple. 12 years of weakness and misery and poverty. 12 years of hopelessness. And Luke says no one could heal her. Now remember, Luke was a doctor. When Mark's writing this story, he's a little bit more excoriating about doctors. Mark is much more blunt. He says, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet she grew worse. So Mark doesn't hold his punches when he's describing the failure of the doctors to help this woman. Luke does. He just says, no one could heal her. 
but there was one ray of hope. If only she could touch Jesus' clothes, she believed she would be made well. Now Jesus was being crushed. People were trying to get to him, was being jostled and, and, and shouldered and barged around all the time. But she was motivated by hope. She was driven by faith. She was determined to get to him. So scores of people were brushing up against Jesus, but one did so with faith and with hope. And we read that after 12 years, immediately her bleeding stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter said, well, loads of people are touching you, Lord. They're all jostling you and shouldering you. And he said, no, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Now, we see from this that doing miracles cost Jesus energy. Doing miracles wore Jesus out. Doing miracles had an impact on Jesus' human frame. In chapter 6, verse 19, it says, People all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Do you remember in the story of the stilling of the storm? Jesus had to be taken into the boat. He was so worn out by his miraculous healings, he was tired. And he crashed into the boat and fell asleep in the stern on a cushion and didn't even know the storm was raging. Miracles cost Jesus energy. And he knew he'd lost energy through healing this woman. She knew she couldn't hide. She came trembling and fell at his feet. And he spoke to her with one lovely word. He said, daughter, catch the tenderness of that word. She's been excluded for 12 years by her family, by her synagogue, by her neighbours, by her friends. She's been an untouchable for 12 years. Now she's back in the family daughter, your faith has saved you. This doesn't mean auto-suggestion. This is not mind over matter. It means her faith in Jesus had been the trigger for her healing. It is he that had done it. There was a boy in Sunday school who was asked, uh, what is faith? And he said, it's when you close your eyes and screw up your face and believe something which isn't true. No, that isn't faith. Faith is believing in someone who is true, who can do that which you're asking him to do. Her faith was in Jesus and therefore she was healed. And the word here again, healed or saved, it can be translated either way, just as faith and trust can be translated either way. She had faith and trust in Jesus. She was healed and she was saved. Just as in chapter 7, when Jesus had spoken to a sinful woman who had washed his feet, with her tears and dried his feet with her hair, he said, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Here he says to this woman, your faith has saved you, your faith has healed you, go in peace. Three miracles for excluded people. Three miracles for outcasts. Three miracles for people that nobody else really wanted to have anything to do with. Firstly, a single leper, then a group of ten lepers, and then a hemorrhaging woman. But our starting point was that the miracles are signs. So what are these miracles pointing out about Jesus? They're showing us that Jesus includes the excluded. Jesus accepts the rejected. Jesus touches the untouchable. Jesus loves the unlovable. Jesus forgives those the system refuses to forgive. Jesus saves those who are unsavable. Aren't you glad? Haven't you ever felt excluded, rejected, untouchable, unlovable? Have you never felt unsavable, unforgivable? Jesus does all of these things. His, his kingdom embraces all sorts of people. Anyone who has faith in him is included. Jesus saves and Jesus heals those who come to him. I'm going to close with the words of a hymn used so often at the end of Billy Graham's services. Just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing of the mind, yes, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come. 
just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down, now to be thine, yes, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. Amen. Thank you so much for listening.